Hi, everyone. My name is Paige Peterson. I do communications and a little bit of web development for a company called MadeSafe. Um, so I guess, yeah, I'm coming from more of the community and storytelling side of things. So um, the transition to Rust for MadeSafe has been really exciting and um, sort of uh, scary in some points, but it makes for a really great story. So I'm gonna, that's kind of what I'm gonna be focusing on. Um, so if you don't know what Made Safe is, um, we just in brief, I mean it's a it's kind of a big ambitious project, but we're essentially trying to replace uh, the need for dependence on servers with a completely decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes. So essentially users will be able to uh, start up a node on laptops, home computers, whatever device they want, and allocate uh, resources to this network so that other people can upload their data and make use of this. Um, it's uh, in addition to it, the, the main focus, I guess, at the beginning is this concept of being able to distribute storage and do distributed communications as well. Um, but it, in the end, it's a development platform, so uh, applications will be built on top of it, on top of the, the stack that we're building. So we are doing a lot of outreach for third-party developers. So um, if you have any interest in building uh, applications which don't depend on servers and are particularly uh, focused on security and privacy for your users, then um, MadeSafe is uh, and the safe network is something that you want to be looking at. So I should uh, say that we're not quite in production yet, even though uh, this is in production. Um, we potentially earn the, that title because we have completely scrapped all of our C++ code and have uh, decided to switch completely to Rust. So maybe that just kind of deserves in production because we are uh, committed to using it for the production. Um, at this point, we are finalizing our rewriting of the libraries and we are releasing libraries in bundles so you can kind of keep track of, of what we're doing and see the libraries that we've been releasing over time. And um, you know, we don't really have a, a launch date. We're not really interested in doing, uh, focusing on that. We just kind of want to get tools out for developers to start using and for other people to start looking at. Uh, so initially, um, we had we were the very beginning stages of MadeSafe was a lot of research and development, so using uh, Python for that and. Um, uh, eventually switching over to C++ for the production use that uh, C++ had been, development had been going on for several years um, and then Rust happened and um, I should say that it really started out from just the founder, David Irvine, uh, playing around with uh, rewriting one of our one of the safe network libraries into rust and he spent three full days without much sleep but essentially rewrote an entire library in those three days um, to work at a, a minimum capacity and that was really his trigger to realizing that um, we it was probably a good idea to to try to get more developers working on these. So he pulled a few other developers aside from the core team, actually not from the core team, from kind of the front end team, and um, requested that they build a couple of the libraries um, themselves, and it took them a couple of weeks. And through that, um, becoming kind of more uh, confident in the ability for particularly the front end developers to do this, um, we went all in on Rust and deleted all of our C++ code. <laughs> um, so it 
it had a lot of benefits. Uh, the, the biggest benefit is the reduction in code. Um, so we had also, I guess we should say that um, during this time we were also going through a refactoring stage. The, the code base was very large before. Um, so we went from essentially almost 500,000 lines of C++ code to seven, about 70,000 lines of C++ code after like doing a lot of refactoring. And then from there, we reduced it even more. So we went to about 7,000 lines of Rust code um, by switching all of our libraries into Rust. It could be a little bit more because this, um, you know, this statistic was taken from a couple months ago, but um, we've essentially been uh, able to be really efficient with the, the code and what we're building. And I read this quote uh, at the, the launch uh, party, but I think it's a really awesome quote and it kind of sums up the, the founder's mindset of switching. And this in context was a little bit of uh, trouble running into some frustration with um, building and testing with Rust. Um, so, um, he said, we cannot short circuit, alter the system of test builds, etc. So we need to just work harder to test really. Otherwise we go back to the land of spaghetti and complexity where nobody knows what's happening. We are not going back there. Um, and so additionally to kind of just the hard numbers, uh, the uh, clear efficiency that uh, this uh, platform we're building is gaining from switching to Rust. Uh, we've had a lot of um, kind of social improvements as well. So I mentioned that he had pulled aside a couple of front-end developers to uh, experiment rewriting some of the libraries into Rust. And uh, it's really true that it has empowered a lot of our front-end developers. Originally we had a, a core set, a uh, core team of developers um, that was only about five people that really understood what was happening with the C++ code. And um, it was harder for other people to pick it up, but um, by switching to Rust, um, there's a lot of kind of empowerment of front-end developers because they were uh, able to take on this new language and learn it just as quickly as um, C++. So, um, so yeah, those initially hired for application development are now core developers. Um, that's not to say that they're not also doing application development because we're also building applications which will be running on top, but they're able to kind of integrate more and um, you know, everyone can kind of work on both sets of things. Um, another, oh, and so original core developers are also welcoming the change. I shouldn't say it's all like, unicorns and rainbows when switching over to Rust. We definitely had a lot of, uh, you know, skeptic, uh, skepticism within, uh, within the team. And it did actually end up that we uh, departed uh, ways with two contractors who were just very into C++ and, you know, they, they really want to keep doing that and that's fine. We need uh, expert C++ people to be working on C++ things, but um, it wasn't really working out with, you know, going all in on Rust as we had been. But um, most of our core developers were really excited about this. It helps them um, gain a lot of efficiency and um, here's another quote. This is from one of the core developers. I'm just, this is, I'm just taking it from our forum. Um, so this is public anyway. Um, I still remember my first week with Rust, which I mean, that was probably a few months ago, but so good thing that he remembers it. But uh, when we first started coding the Crust library, which is one of our, uh, uh, the layers in our stack, uh, we just had one test and I was very sure that we wouldn't be able to get any library to work on the very first attempt. However, I was very happy to be proven wrong. So a lot of the libraries that we were rebuilding um, just worked uh, from the start. Um, it, there wasn't, there was, there was not a lot of uh, change needed and um, this just made for a very happy core development team and the fact that 
we only really started rewriting into Rust uh, about uh, four months ago. So David started playing around with this, you know, this one library in early March, late February, early March. And, you know, from there, uh, we probably, I think we decided to kind of go all in early, early April. And since then, we've been rewriting all of our code. So it's just been a really fast pace and really exciting. So in addition to um, internal motivation, we're excited about the, uh, you know, the growing interest from outside contributors. So um, similarly with internal, we uh, also had a little skept a lot of skepticism from the community. We have a pretty large community that are interested in the, the technology we're building. Um, but, uh, you know, once making that switch and committing to it, over time we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement from the core community, especially seeing how fast we're able to iterate on building. Um, so excitement from the community and expanding core development and understanding. We don't, um, building this kind of secondary internet, we don't want to be this core group of people that are, you know, just us knowing how it works and us maintaining it. We want it to be this large uh, global effort. So um, we are excited about the, uh, the potential and, um, you know, just expanding of getting other sorts of developers uh, interested in doing core development. So it's not just people that know C++. And here's a quote from another core developer. This was from an interview that he was doing uh, on, on a podcast that's actually about Made Safe and what we're building. I know Rust has its own podcast, which is really cool. Uh, but someone also started up a podcast for, for Made Safe, and that's, uh, you can kind of tell like the strength in community when someone decides to start a podcast and start talking about it and get people inter getting people on their show and talking about it. So uh, the problem uh, is a very good C++ programmer would be able to write code which doesn't produce any conflicts when it's running on multi-threaded systems, but it requires being awake and you cannot program in the very late hours of the night. It requires a lot of mental effort and the help of Rust is exactly that. The computer is always there watching over you. And I would add, you know, the good kind of watching over you, not like the NSA kind of watching over you. <laughs> um, so, this is, uh, I guess this is where I get really excited about uh, this stuff, is the growing and mixing of communities. So, like any, um, you know, new programming language, you're obviously going to be mixing a lot of people from different interests because they're going to be building different tools. And similarly with uh, what MadeSafe is building, we are um, kind of bringing together different people from different, um, different interests. So people that are interested in security, decentralization, networking, free open source software. I should note that uh, our code base is GPL, so if you're interested in GPL stuff, then um, yeah, build, build on MadeSafe because we, we kind of want to push this uh, GPL and open source um, discussion forward. We think it's really important for kind of this new internet precedent that we're trying to set. Uh, additionally, with growing community, we have recently announced a bounty system for the core code base. So if you are, you know, either just getting into Rust or just looking for something to work on within Rust, I suggest looking into the uh, Safe Network core code base and seeing if you can contribute. We'll, we're essentially going to be um, putting up bounties for bugs and features. And depending on this point system that we've created, if, uh, if you create, create something that gets merged, then uh, you mm -hmm. earn uh, kind of uh, uh, um, 
you earn you earn income based on like how much work you've put in, how many points the uh, the bounty was worth. So we're paying all of those bounties out in Bitcoin because that's what we have to spend. <laughs> um, but Bitcoin is money, right? So. Um, and then we're also, because we're a platform, we're interested in kind of doing outreach to, for having third party developers. So, um, so uh, obviously we want to, anyone to be able to build an application in any sort of language that they want, but we're definitely interested in kind of pushing forward the Rust community and helping that grow as much as possible as well. Um, and generally, um, we're very appreciative of and align with a lot of what the Rust uh, core developers and community are doing. So open, open meetings, open discussions, open code, where we, we align very greatly with that. And we're really appreciative of the outreach that the core developers of Rust have um, done with us. They've we've um, they've done calls with you know uh, a few of the companies doing production work and kind of asking you know being in tune with what we're building and seeing how they can help us and we can help them. So I think it's a very um, just open and um, uh, motivating uh, feature of like having this having. Uh, this, the way of uh, kind of doing open development and collaborating with different communities. So just to end it, um, I think I'm a little over, sorry about that. Uh, so these are kind of links that you want to take note of if you're interested. Um, our GitHub, all of our code is open, GPL. Um, we have our um, kind of issue tracker at at Listen, we have our crates, so you can just search crates.io for Made Safe and see our uh, crates on there. Um, communities at forum.safenetwork.io, and then the company website is madesafe.net. So uh, if you're interested in any of this, I don't have question, time for questions now, but feel free to talk to me. Thanks.